What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the X Transbots Fast and Fury, or their versions of a Mastery Scale Run Amok and Runabout. So I've been looking forward to these guys. These are some of my favorite toys as a kid. Uh, one of the only few Transformers I had. So I was excited when I heard that X Transbots was doing it. Not my favorite choice for the company to do it, but still, nonetheless, they look good. Thanks to Ricky for allowing me to take a look at his copy. I am actually getting these for myself, so I'll just send him mine when they show up. But let's take a look at Fast. He's got a nice pearlescent paint, black paint here for the intakes, a little bit of orange paint for the markers on the side, black stripe and a black door handle, and a keyhole, another orange marker, Black and red for this taillight, that looks really good, very accurate to the vehicle. Nice chrome wheels with rubber tires. Uh, it does roll, and it has a lot of features, <laughs> so both of them have to, but you can first push down on the back of the light, and that'll pop up the headlight. So, same on the side. And that looks pretty nice, it's basically Looks like a little bit of gray with translucent plastic. You can also open up the doors. And there is an interior, but there's also this thing right here. I don't know. It's just that. Why? Why bother? I mean, if I haven't determined if this causes any issues, but I don't really need the interior, especially if it requires me to open the second window. The second door. So I do find that a little silly. But there is a seat there and there is a steering wheel there. You could probably put a mini spike in there. And when you close it, just make sure you close this one first and then the outer door. Same thing on this side. You also have a hood here. Um, and I recommend you push down on the back and then pop up in the front and you have some engine detail in there, which again, I don't know if that affects the other mode yet, but pretty nice engine detail. So lots of little features here in vehicle mode. You also get his gun, which you can store. So if you, again, open up the doors, if you unpeg these panels right here, then we can pull apart the legs or I guess this front part of the car. And this is going to sit, there's a little slot right here on the inside. So you're going to lay it down like this. There's two little spots here that have to make their way back in. So make sure those are both lined up, then squeeze it together. And you can see the gun squeezed in there. And then you can put this back, put the door back. And same on this side. And now we have the gun storage. So nice vehicle mode there. Let's take a look at this one. He's done in more like a brownish gray. I kind of wish it was black or a darker color. The brown just it doesn't quite look right to me. And uh, by the way, I'll probably put the vehicle modes up on the screen. He has pretty much the same features. You can open up the door and then there's an inner, <laughs> inner door there. And you get the seats and the steering wheel, same thing. And this has like a metallic red, which we'll see in the robot mode. This one's got nice big black rearview mirrors, whereas this one's got the smaller white ones. So they are different in that way. This also has a windshield wiper here on the front, whereas this one doesn't. And so there are differences. The lights also different, shaped different and styled differently. This is a Lotus, by the way. This is a Pontiac Trans Am. So they really did make them different in vehicle mode, which which is one of the reasons I got this set is because I really like how they did the vehicle modes. But you got translucent lights there, orange here, orange there, shiny chrome wheels, and it's, it's stylized, so that looks nice. Rubber tires, rolls, another marker here. You have tail lights here done in translucent red. These can flip around, so if you prefer a flat tail light like that without the ridges on it, you can have that. Kind of unnecessary, but 
it's cool that they give you the option. And yeah, overall pretty good looking. You can open the hood as well. This one opens in reverse, which is accurate to the vehicle. There's a little bit of engine detail on this one, not, not as much as this, but still pretty cool that you can open up all that stuff. So this one also, same thing, if you want to store the gun, you can open these up, open up the door and open, unpeg these hinges, pull apart here, get this lined up, and it's the same kind of thing. I found it interesting that these designs are different. They're slightly different between the two, even though the robot modes are very similar. They did a good job differentiating the vehicles. So, pretty happy with these. And for some quick size comparisons, there it is next to the x transverse version of Punch Counter Punch, the Takara Smokescreen, and the Magic Square version of Optimus Prime. And at first glance, I thought, hey, these fit in pretty nicely, but then I looked a little closer, and it does seem like the field was a little bit small. You know, here it is next to a 280Z, and this Pontiac, you know, Trans Am, it just seems a little bit tiny. And I kind of understand why, you know, the Lotus is a little bit smaller of a vehicle, and they had to make these basically the same or very close in terms of their scale. But, you know, bringing this car, it, you know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, this is a really small car. So, I don't know. The scale of the vehicles isn't quite right, but good enough for, for display. All right, now let's get them transformed into robot modes. And we'll do one at a time, starting off with fast here. And they are slightly different transformations, so I'll point those out. But starting from the bottom here, we can open up the doors, unpeg from here. You can unpeg this as well. And just leave those open. Come to the side here, we're going to pull down on this, it's tabbed in right here. So unpeg that and pull that down. And that should release these legs. The windshield is pegged into the top of the, the hood. Mine tends to get stuck, so I need to use a spudger to like release it. Um, I'm not sure if that's a results may vary type of thing, but there you go. So those are tabbed in to the front. Now that you've got those loose, make sure these are unpegged and we can cordian the legs all the way down. And you're going to rotate at the hips, right? So you're kind of like doing a double hinge. Unpeg the legs from each other. You can open these hip skirts up to give yourself a little bit of room. And now we'll work on these legs. Go ahead and pull down on the feet. It is kind of a very squeaky hinge. Then rotate that down out of your way. We're going to open up this door right here. So bring this to the side. Open this up. We're going to fold this panel down on the back. Fold this panel out. And then come to the front. Rotate this up. That way you can fit this across and underneath here. Then you're going to rotate this back the other way to get it under here. For this knee, we're going to lift up on this hinge, close that panel up, and this is going to come over and down on the front. I'll take care of this door. This door has like a kind of weird move, but basically you're going to rotate, and it's also sliding on the slider up, and then you're going to bring the window down. Close this up. This is going to end up in between these two panels here, so bring this down, rotate it in. On the front, you're going to tab it in right here to the side of this um, panel right here. And on the back, you're going to peg this into the back. So that kind of holds the leg together. Open up this little panel here. Peg that into the back of the door as well. And last, we'll take care of this foot. So open it up like that. And rotate this down for now. Rotate this around 180 degrees. Rotate this around. Fold this flat. Bring this panel up. You can close it for now. Bring this panel up and that wheel has to just make it past there. And we can fold this into here and then close up that foot. And then you want to kind of close up that gap so that it's sort of flush. 
So that's one leg done. I'll go ahead and do the other one off camera since it is the same and we'll be right back. All right, now we got both legs done. We can take care of the upper torso here. So come and fold these down to the front. We're gonna fold this steering wheel flat and then fold these seats flat. So it should look like that. Next, we're gonna release all this um, from the back. So open up these. The first time you do it, it might get stuck here. So just make sure it's making its way under and not getting caught up. There's a tolerance issue there. Same with this one, open this up. And leave that outwards like that. Come to the back here, we're gonna unpeg the arms from this bumper. And then we're gonna unpeg this rear glass from the top of the bumper, tabbed in right there. Unpeg the bumpers from each other, and now you have two pieces here. You can bring these arms, unpeg them, and just bring them down to the sides and leave them there for now. And now we'll take care of all of this. Lift up this backpack and get out of the way. We're going to rotate these to the back so that they end up like this and just leave them out for now, kind of out of the way. Come to the backpack and we're going to flip, I kind of already did it, but we're going to flip this around and make sure everything's clearing. So this ends up like that. Then we will take care of all this. So bring this panel in, bring this wheel in, same on this side. And we'll bring all this down on this double hinge. Bring these arms in. And this is gonna slide back, so we're gonna lift up on here and slide that back so this panel ends up behind this front piece. So it should look like that. All right, it should go all the way back. And it's sitting on top of these side door pieces, so make sure those made its way right into the groove there. Right. Bring these back. Um, this is going to come down. Fold the wheels in so they end up perpendicular, or sorry, parallel. And then this is going to come down. And we're going to fix these ab pieces now. So bring this hinge forward all the way. So you have an angle like this, and then bring this down and tab these two little white pieces onto the side of this center crotch. So it should end up like that. Come to the back here, we're gonna bring this down. And as you're bringing this down, make sure this tabs into the top here. And come down here and make sure this tabs into the bottom. There. And it should look something like this kind of more compact. This is gonna fit right into here and just kind of click into place. Bring these back and make sure they're oriented like this with the arms down. You can kind of angle it upwards, but basically get it up over this windshield and then tab it together. So it looks like that. And last, we'll take care of the arms. So open up this panel, open up the arm, close up this panel, rotate the arm down, slide down in the arm, rotate the arm, rotate the hand. So we'll do that again. And last step here is we're gonna rotate the head. All right, now let's get Fury transformed. And it is a slightly different transformation. And actually there's a couple steps that are, I think a little bit harder, but start the same way. Come to the bottom here, we'll unpeg the doors and these panels, which are, this is more like a hook tab instead of uh, tabbing it to the side of the vehicle. 
So it's not as secure as the other one. Uh, we're still going to do the same thing up here. We're going to open up this. And I have a bad uh, part here. I have something broken. So you can't tell. And there was no way to know before. Open up this panel. And this one, when I first opened it, I had some issues. It was, it was really tight. And then it got loose like this. So I was like, oh, okay, it just, it's a loose screw or something. It's actually sheared off. <laughs> and there's no way to know, there's no screw to access it and loosen it up. So unfortunately that broke off. But right now it looks like it's fine, but once we get it transformed, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so now that you get those off, uh, we can unpeg this wheel. And we have everything detached so that we can pull these legs out just like the other, the other one. And rotate that all the way to the front. And we'll take care of these legs. Unpeg them from each other. And you can open up the hip skirts to give yourself a little bit more room. And we'll take care of this. Rotate this to the inside. We're going to rotate this. And just leave that like that. Open up this panel. We're going to slide this side of it up. So it sits a little bit higher. That's going to fold it down. I'm going to fold that down. We're going to open up the foot and then rotate it down like that so it gets out of your way. Come to the back here, we're gonna fold this open, fold this open. We're gonna rotate this in so it sits like that. Then we can close the door. So bring this around. Oh, and sorry, we have to lift this open and then bring this around. We can accordion this up and around like that and then close up that little panel on the inside of the thigh. Just like the other one, this door and window are going to go in between here and you have to slide it up so it sits flush with this corner. You're going to tab it in here on the side and then on the back just like the other one, you're going to close this up, close this up, tab it in. Come to the foot, we're going to, and this is the broken piece right here. As soon as I rotate this wheel, you'll see. So rotate this around, and yeah, so it falls right off. This is this is what's sheared. And let me see if I can get a good, a good angle on it. Right there. And this is attached like this. There's no screw, there's nothing, it just, it's just a piece of plastic, it was too tight, it was seized on there, and basically, you know, I rotated it and it broke. So it actually works in vehicle mode, it works in robot, uh, in um, vehicle mode just fine, but it doesn't work in robot mode, if it falls off. So I'm just going to set this aside, but I wanted to point out what it was. Rotate the wheel around, rotate this faux wheel out, and then get the foot rotated down. And this wheel should be flat on the bottom of the foot. So that's what it should look like. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Or just to show you the good side, here's what it looks like. So we're going to rotate this wheel to the outside. Rotate this 180 degrees. Flatten out your wheel. And then rotate this panel over. And this is going to come down and sit on the bottom of the foot. It's actually quite ugly but that's both legs done so now we will take care of the upper body and this is a little different from the other one so come to the back here we're gonna unpeg all of this it's tabbed in here and then it's got this teeny tiny round peg and we need to use that later and I think that's where people are missing something and why they're having trouble so I'll point it all out but Open this up, uh, our steering wheel already went down, so fold the seats flat on top. Fold out your ab pieces here on the bottom. We're going to unpeg the rear from the seats. And we're going to unpeg the glass from this rear. 
that allowed us to take these arms and rotate those down. Right, and just leave those there for now. We'll take care of that in a minute. Next, we'll take care of this upper part here. So unpeg this from each other and make sure it's unpegged from this glass right here. Recording this down and out of the way. So this one down and out of the way. Come to the back here. We're going to unpeg this. It's actually wrapped around this inner one. And we'll do the same thing we did in the other one. We're basically going to flip this around. Make sure you actually clear everything. You're not hitting anything. And we'll bring this down. This is going to collapse down and then angle forward. Make sure you have these folded all the way up. And then tab those into the sides of this crotch piece. Come to the back here and we'll take care of this. So for the arms, we're going to fold out this piece right here. We're going to fold the entire piece up into the arm like that. And then you're going to peg this part in. Slide down the arm, rotate to the front, rotate the hand. And that's one arm. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Alright, now that we got both arms down, we can take care of the backpack. So come to here and we're going to rotate these towards the front so that the backpack can go around. And this is a step that I think people are messing up. So fold these over like that. And then this peg is going to make its way into this hole right here. So make sure it goes down and, it, and you have to be careful because the, especially the first time it's very tight. And it doesn't line up perfectly. It's like a little bit off. All right, once you have those in there, you can fold these up. And if the wheels don't sit flat on that back like this, flush, then you don't have something right. So that's, that's kind of a big part of getting this backpack right. We're going to slide this top part back just like we did in the other one. It is going to sit on ridges on the edge of this piece right here. Then you're going to bring the backpack down and it's supposed to peg right there. There's a little peg and a little little notch on the inside. Unfortunately, it just doesn't hold very well. You know, it does go in there like that and it's actually oh, a nice line up there, but it comes out just way too easily. Right, open this up. We're going to bring these down and around. In the instructions, they say to flip these lights around. It really doesn't matter. Who cares? But it does smooth out that surface. So that's the official transformation. Get this angled up like this. And then that tab is going to tab into the back of this windshield. And the last step here is to take the head and rotate that around. And there we have Fast and Fury in their robot modes. And I do think they look really good, but there are some places where they don't feel so good. We'll talk about those. Let's put the cartoon images up there. They did a good job capturing the characters here. You know, they really look like it, but it's got a little bit of sculpted things that make it stand out from the cartoon, so I like that. There's the face sculpts. They did a nice job on those. I like the metallic red eyes with the painted face. So that just you know sets it apart from the rest of the paint on the body. Here's the back. It's clean kind of up here, but on the bottom there's a lot of stuff, especially the feet. Uh, but overall, pretty pretty good looking. So let's go over the articulation. We'll do both because they're a little bit different. The fast the head is on a ball joint, goes up and down. Get a little bit of side to side and then it rotates around. It's a little hindered due to the pylons, but that is the look they had. But there you go for that. Shoulders rotate around on a hinge out to the side on this hinge, or you can lift it up on that hinge. Butterfly joint on that hinge as well, just due to the design. Rotation at the bicep, it's a little bit loose on this one. This one's a little bit tighter. You have a 90 degree bend at the elbow, 
rotation at the wrist, single pin for the hands, rotation at the wrist. Uh, there's a little bit of paint flex that come off, namely from the hands and some of the joints, some of the panels here that are uh, used for to combine them together. Uh, so, and the tolerances are all over the place. Some of them are tight, some of them are loose, some of them are too tight. You have a waist rotation. Ab crunch uh, up to there. If you go too far, you'll start on transforming it, so just, just that much. The leg will kick up to there on a ratchet. Back, but as you go past this, now when you go back, it's going to hit this, this ab piece, you see? And it's going to undo it. So, you know, I haven't found a way to not do that. It looks like it just collides. It's just, you know, little design things like that. If you lift up this hip skirt, you can go out to the side on friction. This one is tight, but it works. That one is ridiculously tight, but you can get it out to the side. The rotation at the thigh. Uh, this one, this figure is fine. You can actually rotate it. It is tight, but it's rotated. This one you can't even move. You have a more than 90 degree bend, single joint, but more than 90 degree bend at the knee. And again, that tolerance is, is okay. But it is on a screw if you need to tighten it. Uh, there's the screw right there. So if you have to tighten it, you can. Um, it's just awkward. You have an ankle tilt. You have a ratcheted tilt back and forth. And because you have the second joint, you can kind of make them a little bit taller. Speaking of that, Fast is actually a little bit taller than Fury. You can see just, just a hair taller. I think it has to do with the way the feet transform, but... It is slightly taller than that. So let's go over Fury, and he's got some issues. So first off, the head has some kind of problem where, you know, you can either either have up here or down there. It just clicks into place. You know, you can't you can't have it in the middle. I don't know if it's just tolerance or there's maybe some paint or something on there, but it just clicks down. If you have it up, you can rotate it. It's very tight. And you get a little bit side to side. Like I said, it, it likes to click down on its own. Rotation at the shoulder. A uh, little bit loose on this joint. But you can use this one. I need to hold this. And, and this is another weird thing. Like, they didn't figure out that this can only go this high because of the sculpt. You know? And it's different. They have different articulation. Rotation at the elbow. That one's okay. And degree bend at the elbow. Rotation at the wrist. Single pin for the hands. This one has a little bit less paint flex coming off, but it's got other issues. Rotation at the waist. Ab crunch. Uh, the backpack tends to come apart uh, right here. No matter how you do it. And I noticed l afterwards that if you look at the inside of these panels right here, they're supposed to peg in right there. And the little teeny tiny pegs, hopefully you can see that on camera, right there, you see that little white? That's a peg that broke off. So they're really tiny and they break off very easily. They're meant to clip and give a little extra support to hold us in, but you know, because they're gone, and I, I don't know when they were gone, but they obviously break very easily. By the time they were gone, it makes this backpack loose. So it comes loose very easily. So you do have an ab crunch here, but you know, that starts to come apart there. We have a hip joint goes up to there on a ratchet, back to there on a ratchet. Again, you have the colliding with its own ab piece here. Out to the side, that's really tight, but it goes up to there. No rotation. These are completely stuck. I cannot get it to rotate. I'm already It's already broken, so I'm not going to break it anymore. But there's no thigh rotation. It's just completely stuck. You have the bend at the knee goes well past 90 degrees. These are a little bit loose, but like I mentioned, there's a screw right there. So if you want to tighten it, I'll probably tighten them. I just want to show you how it came out of box. Um, this one's a little bit looser. You can't hold his weight. Um, just due to the, the knees being loose. Um, these are also a little bit loose, the ankle tilts right here. But again, those are on a screw, so I guess you could tighten if you want. It's on a ratchet, soft ratchet. 
and you have tilt out to the side. It actually looks better with that piece gone. Here's here are the two feet, and that panel is missing. And it looks a lot better without it. So, you know, silver lining on the cloud. For the accessories, we just get the one gun here, plated in black and red, sculpted nicely. And these have a little trouble fitting in there. You can see there's actually white paint rubbing off the hand now on the gun. So I do recommend caution because it's a tight fit, but you basically want to slide it in like this and then move it over. And then you want to push this up a little bit to get that tab in. Now it's straight, but it's, it is a tight fit. But that looks nice. And we can give Fury his gun as well. There you go. Pretty nice looking weapons. And for some size comparisons, there it is next to the Takara Ironhide, the Blue Streak, and then the Magic Square version of Optimus Prime. And they are a little bit taller than the Takara Carbots, but smaller than Optimus and Ironhide. So a little bit bigger. It's kind of interesting and strange that in vehicle mode, they're actually smaller than some of the, the Carbots, but then they're bigger in robot mode. And so. just for fun, there it is next to my custom Run Amok and Runabout made by Get Right Robot. These were made from Masterpiece Wheeljacks. And this is what I was talking about with, you know, they have little accents of paint. You can see this has like little orange and gold accents. This one's got some silver accents here and there. And that just kind of makes it stand out a little bit. Now, I know they were going for the tune look, so it's just that very clean color, but it's a little boring. So okay. final recommendations on the X Transbots Fast and Fury. I'm going to do two separate scores here just because they're two different figures with different sets of problems. But for fast, I'm going to give it a four to five. I'm going to recommend it. Um, there are a few little issues, but overall, I like the way the vehicle mode looks. I like the way their robot mode looks. The transformation is a little bit frustrating, but it works and the robot mode functions as I'd expect. A couple little collisions like the hip with the, with the abs there and a few other things like the feet are, are kind of ugly. But overall, I'm a, I'm a fan of this figure. Unfortunately, for Fury, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. I'm not going to recommend it. It has a lot of issues. Number one, I had the issue with this part breaking off because this was seized. And that was just, you know, poor design. I'm not sure why. And there was no way for me to avoid it. It just, there's no screw to remove or anything like that. Um, I also have the seized thigh rotation. And I guess that's a common issue. I, I heard that Bobby had that as well. Um, that just seems like, you know, an error, <laughs> an error on their part. Uh, the little hole in the windshield, not, not my favorite. Uh, the backpack coming apart is another issue. You know, it just comes apart so easily. I don't know why they couldn't have used a tab like they did for this one. And then I have the little weird thing with the head where it kind of like cl clicks into place. Like it doesn't stay in the middle. It wants to like flop down into that position. So just little weird things like that. It almost feels like this guy was made first and then they wanted to get him out before Chinese New Year. So they rushed and put this guy out and, you know, didn't really check. And he's got some issues. Now, unfortunately, these guys are a pair. So if you're in for one, you're probably in for both. So it's a little weird for me to not recommend one of these. Um, but that's the way I feel. This, this one is definitely inferior in this set. So if you're looking for these guys, I think for a representation for Run Amok and Runabout, I think they do a pretty good job. But just be aware of the issues with this one. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.